First question, Logan in the middle. Uh, uh, this question is for Chris. Uh, Chris, you've played um, alongside Giannis and his team, and while you've been doing that, some your game has been dissected, sometimes maligned, but you've had great postseason performances. Do you think playing a game like this on this stage at this time of the series, did you do you feel like a weight is off your shoulder at all? Uh, no, not necessarily. I mean, um, not perfect. I feel like I've had a great career so far. Um, you know, every year I feel like I advance my game. And, uh, you know, as an organization, we take a step forward most of these years that I've been here. Um, as far as the other stuff, I really don't care about. Um, well, with myself, um, with this organization, it's all about taking a step each day in the right direction. Giannis talked about how much he trusts you. And, you know, you saw the play after you got the layup, how everybody just kind of came onto you and picked you up. Um, what is it like to have that trust of your teammates? Does that help you kind of block out any outside noise that you get because you have the backing of your team? For sure. I mean, um, my teammates, um, first, my coaches, um, then everybody else in the organization, their opinion matters to me the most. Um, you know, I really... I'm sorry, but I don't care what you guys write or what you guys think, whether it's good or bad. Um, but, you know, um, for my teammates to have the confidence in me, trust in me, um, that's the most important of all. Eric, on your right. Uh, I'll ask both of you, but we'll start with Pat. Um, just what do you think, as Giannis goes up for that block? I think you're over by Crowder kind of trailing the play. Yeah, I was um, I was on Crowder, the guy who was pulling up after the pick and roll. I was thinking I was right around the elbow at the time. Um, and the honest thought that was going through my head was more or less kind of like shock and awe. I think, you know, when the block happened, I kind of looked like, and luckily PJ came across the lane and grabbed the rebound because I for forgot for a split second to go <laughs> grab it. Um, you know, I kind of said it's, uh, in my opinion, the best block of all time. Uh, you know, obviously we're a little biased and you can uh, talk about the LeBron block as well. But uh, as far as a, a block where he was covering the pick and roll, he had to judge where the pass was, where Aiton was uh, catching it and trying to dunk it above the box. Um, it's about as oppressive as you can get. Chris, you were far side, I, I believe. Just yeah. what was your vantage point? Kind of same thing to him. Uh, probably say excuse my language, but it was one of those oh shit moments. Uh, two times, like oh man, like we gave up a layup. Then next thing you know, he's blocking it. Um, it was a, a great effort. Um, you know, didn't give up on the play when it seemed like they had an open layup or a dunk and. You know, that's what we need um, in this finals. Everybody get those extra effort. And, then, you know, he came through for, for us big um, on that play. Chris, um, for you, obviously, everyone, all of your teammates that have been up here have talked about how much they trust you. Pat had missed two threes at the start of the fourth quarter, and then he steps into a big one and manages to hit it. Just what do you think it is? You see Pat line up another one and, and have that open shot. That's what we want him to do. That's what he's out there for. Um, he's hit many big shots. Um, for us throughout the season, throughout this playoff run. Um, like I said, he's out there for a reason. If, if he has an opening to shoot and he's wide open, he's got to shoot it. Um, whether it's make or miss, it's just going to keep the defense honest uh, for one. But then two, he's a, he's a great shooter. Tim? Uh, Chris, as you, you obviously went on that 10-0 run in the final couple minutes there. You, you had to get picked up off the ground because you clearly were out of gas after that layup. But what what kind of allowed you to summon the energy needed to to make those plays in that moment there? Uh, everybody's tired. Everybody's banged up. Um, just got to give it y'all. Leave it all on the court. Uh, we could rest and sleep and get treatment um, after the game. But, you know, while that game is being played, um, there's no excuses of exhaustion or something's hurt. If you're hurt, you just can't be out there. Um, but I saw it. Give it to y'all. And, and what exactly is it about this building that you – thrive so much in it and I mean even next door you weren't quite the same players you've been since you've gotten here it's just the energy um you know I've been playing in this I guess building for two years now um a lot of shots I guess I gotta get some extra shots in Phoenix and whatnot but I um, just gotta find a way to to knock down shots um on the road I mean it's been tough for me all you know postseason long um just gotta find a way Brian over here on the left Chris, it seemed like earlier in that fourth quarter, you guys were just kind of hanging there a little bit. They opened a little bit of a lead. Was there a, a point where it sort of changed and you said, okay, I can win this for us now? We're, we're, we're there? No, I mean, um, you know, they hit a three to start off the, the fourth quarter. But I think for a majority of the game, we had a lot of great looks. We missed them. A lot of layups, a lot of open threes. Um, you just hope at some point they're going to fall. But at the same time, you have to get stops. And that's the main thing that fourth quarter, we were able to get stops when we needed to. Lori, right here. 
I hate to oversimplify it, but um, your team was shooting 38%. Did you feel like you just needed to take over at that point in those final two minutes? And then secondly, we don't talk enough about your free throw shooting and how clutch it is. How much work do you put into that? Or is that just something that's been so automatic for you for so long? It's effortless. Uh, as far as free throws, I mean, uh, it's just a routine thing. Um, you know, we do free throw shooting games after practice every day. Um, you know, I shoot free throws uh, for my pregame routine. It's just, you know, a routine thing for me. Um, as far as the fourth quarter, late in the fourth quarter, um, you know, we just ran sets that, you know, enabled me to get to my spots. And after that, I just got to make reads, whether it's to shoot, um, whether to find an open guy, Giannis on the roll. Um, it's just reading the defense at that point. Um, just luckily, thankfully, I hit some shots. Jim, up front. Hey, Ben. Um, late when... The, this, you switch over on to Devin. Um, in in late game situations like that, um, is there any thought of, you know, time on the clock, score, you know, maybe he, they're hunting for that matchup to a degree the way he's playing? Um, and so I guess you kind of speak to that and maybe walk us through how, how you ended up with that contest and, and the miss. Yeah, I mean, you know, I have confidence in my athleticism. Uh, you know, I think I can defend at a high level. Um, I think sometimes uh, they are looking for a matchup, and uh, I think sometimes it's, uh, you know, uh, it's like a pride thing, right? Um, I think he got me once on a pump fake that I can't fall for, giving him free points at the free throw line. We've talked about it, and I got to be better in that situation. He's also a ter terrific player. So he made a few shots on me um, earlier in the game, sometime in the third quarter, I believe. Uh, but they were tough. They were contested shots. And at the end of the day, um, that's my job. It's to keep him in front, be physical, try to make sure that, um, you know, I'm matching uh, his physicality and making sure he's not, you know, backing down or getting free. Uh, and if he's got to make a tough contested shot, that's what he's going to have to do um, in order to, you know, put them in a position to try to win the game. And that's all I thought at the end of the game was uh, he wasn't going to get by me and I was going to be physical enough so that it kind of threw him off when he did have to take the jump shot. Um Bud said this was a mental toughness kind of victory in, in a lot of ways, and, and a lot of hustle plays late. Giannis is blocked. Drew's rebounding some defense there. Either, either of you can answer this, I guess. Is that would, would you say that was accurate in terms of just having to kind of dig into something a little bit in the final few minutes? Yeah, it's a grind. Um, you know, a lot of playoff games, especially when it comes late in the fourth quarter, um, it's a grind. Just got to find a way to, to get it, um, get loose balls, get rebounds figure out a way to get stops against great players. Um, that's how I can really say about it. It's a grind. Jeff, towards the back. For both of you, same topic. Uh, Chris, do you know how many shots you attempted tonight? Um, a playoff career high, 33. Um, when did you realize that was going to be that kind of night for you uh, to take that many shots? And then for you, Pat, when did you start to notice it was a Chris Middleton night? Uh, I don't count shots. I mean, I just try to let the game come to me. The shots there, I got to take it no matter what. Um, no matter how many times I miss, um, that's just the way I play the game. Uh, I don't realize any really stats or shots or points really until the end of the game. I think it's always a Chris Middleton kind of night. <laughs> I mean, uh, at the end of the day, he makes the right plays. Uh, tonight, it called for him to be more aggressive with a jump shot, but he's always going to be aggressive. Uh, he finds the right guys. He finds the open man if they double him, if they try to blitz him. Uh, you know, he's the guy that we want to have the ball at the end of the game, and we have great leadership. Chris, Giannis, Drew, um, no matter what's happening during the game, we all trust their leadership and their ability to make the right play, and whether that's shooting, uh, passing, playmaking, defending, whatever it might be. Um, you know, tonight was one of those nights that, uh, you know, Chris took over, and uh, it's great. Uh, we're, we're happy to have him on our side as opposed to anything else, and uh, I'm just thrilled that, you know, he's been able to kind of show the world it because we see it every single day. Mara on Zoom. Question from Spencer over here on Zoom. Spencer Davies, basketballnews.com. Hey, Chris, uh, obviously it's tough to keep Aiden off the glass when he's he's going up there and getting those rebounds. But uh, even at the beginning of the fourth, uh, when you guys were trailing, when guys to your left like Pat and, and PJ and, and Bobby are going up and gang rebounding and, and taking those opportunities away and fighting for those boards, uh, what does that do for you guys uh, as a team, just energy-wise? Uh, and, and maybe uh, giving you guys some momentum. Just gives us a chance. Um, when we go small, 
that's one of the biggest emphasis that we talk about um, in our timeouts and our huddles is that we got to find a way to block out, pit bodies on on their guys crashing, especially Aiden. Um, you know, he's a beast down there. He finds a way uh, to get tips on balls, um, to tip them out to teammates, um, to grab them and give them extra possessions, extra threes. So um, when guys pat, um, tuck, like you said, when everybody um, comes in and puts a body on him and, you know, helps rebound, it just uh, allows us to play faster. We'll go to Mark Schwartz next on Zoom. Pat, this is for you. You conceded earlier that you may be biased, but I think it's really a good time for you to break down which is the greatest block of all time. <laughs> LeBron's chase down or what Giannis did tonight and why? Uh, you know, I would look at the criteria of greatest block of all time based off uh, difficulty of the block and then, you know, time and score. Uh, I think obviously, you know, LeBron's time and score uh, probably has the edge in that situation because of when it was and helped them, you know, literally win a championship that game. Um, but I think the difference between the time and score difference and then the difficulty of the block difference uh, gives the edge to Giannis just because, you know, um, chase down block, you got a little bit more of an ability to read. And obviously it's a great block. We're talking about two of the best blocks of all time. So I don't want to discredit that block. But um, like I said, Giannis was, he was guarding the pick and roll. I mean, he was guarding the pick and roll. That's a play that, you know, they've done time and time again, um, booked through a great pass. He threw it high and away from any defender and Giannis was able to recover. I mean, uh, he's defensive MV, uh, defense player of the year, you know, two-time MVP for a reason. And I think it's those types of plays, um, you know, to be able to read where Aiton is, where the ball is, and then have the athleticism to get that high and, and get literally all of the basketball. Um, is why I would give the edge to him. Last two questions in here, Lori and then Eric. Chris, your personality is always interesting. When we hear you on Zoom, we have to turn up the volume. And I think you've always hated the limelight. And now I think you're bringing every teammate you can to a joint press conference. <laughs> <laughs> is it just, is it truly you just hate it or you want to share it or you're trying to deflect a little bit? I mean, it's the finals. You, you This is your moment. Uh. It's hard to explain, really. I mean, the uh, teammate thing is just a timing thing. I've, I guess I I tell guys to wait on me. I was hoping he was going to have to answer every question. <laughs> uh, but as far as just, you know, the limelight, whatever, um, I really don't care about it too much. Uh, I just like doing my thing, being around my teammates. Uh, like I said earlier, the credit I get from my teammates or uh, the pain, how do I say this? Whatever my teammates think of me, um, that's what means the most. Um, you know, I love to talk to them, hang out with them some. Um, as far as, you know, being all over the place, being on magazines, commercials, getting interviewed all the time, uh, that's just not me. Um, you know, I like staying low-key, staying out the way. Uh, that's just who I am. Eric, last question on the right. Uh, one more for you, Chris. So, <laughs> uh, for you, uh, you're up four. You're going to the free throw line. You guys have just gotten to stop, and then all of a sudden you feel seven foot, 240 pounds, just <laughs> hug you on the way. Like, what are, you, what are you thinking other than, like, man, I'm tired. Let me shoot this free throw. Nah, I mean, just love those moments. I mean, uh, I know how much he pinned into that game. Um, you know how much I pinned into the game. We knew how much everybody pinned into that game. And uh, it seemed like the game was over, um, you know, there for a minute. But nobody caved. Um, we, we stayed with it. Um, we grinded out a couple of possessions. And, you know, we found a way to win a ball game. Um, you know, that's something that we struggle with sometimes during the season. But we said, you know, that's what it's all about, learning. Learning how to win different type of ball games, different styles. Um, and then that's what that moment was about, finding a way to win a game where it seemed like we weren't going to win and give us a chance to still, you know, have a life. Um, going to Phoenix um, with a little bit of confidence, um, with a little bit of momentum. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks everyone.